I really appreciate this opportunity to cheer you on while I'm on assignment here in downtown Los Angeles. And so I can't join you in person. I'm really disappointed about that. But I've been asked to offer a few opening remarks on your theme of leveraging GIS to understand the impact of black history on our present and leveraging GIS to create a more equ equitable future. So here in Los Angeles, as you can imagine, the heartbreak over the shocking death of Kobe Bryant and his beautiful daughter and their amazing friends is still ever present. Kobe once said, you have to dance beautifully in the box that you are comfortable dancing in. Everybody has their own box. It is your job to try to perfect that box and make it as beautiful a canvas as you can make it. And if you've done that, you've lived a successful life. You've lived with Mamba mentality. Further, with Mamba mentality, I think you are no longer accepting the things you can't change but you are changing the things you can't accept. And that's from Dr. Angela Davis. And you're also doing this with a sports hero stamina and relentless pursuit of perfection. So I think it's also critical that we combine that Mamba mentality with kindness, even when we're leveraging GIS. We use a kindness that doesn't put others down. It's not tribal. It doesn't separate or segregate. It's a kindness that lifts others up, a kindness that leaves people better than you found them, a kindness that's devoted to truth, to justice, and for those of us in the GIS world, to our sacred sense of place. So there's another saying, if you're more fortunate than others, it's better to build a longer table than a taller fence. Here at Esri, we are indeed fortunate. We've been given so much. We're so rich in so many ways, but we're also in need of enriching. So huge props to you for your efforts to build such a long table at Esri, a table that's more inclusive and certainly more intersectional. I also really like what Bernice King said about her father, Martin Luther King, which I think also applies to us. Like Dr. King, we can't be a savior, but we can find solutions. We are not the light, but we can all be single points of light, driven by love. We're not the truth, but we can help reveal truth and speak that truth to power. People like us with integrity and courage, armed with the Mamba mentality and kindness, we produce powerful maps and apps. We need to continue to leverage GIS to create that more equitable present and future through just what you are already doing. And there's so many great examples, such as the story map that Black Voice News and Mapping Black California made that reveals the untold history of segregated beaches and segregated beach resorts here in Southern California, or the work of Black Girls Map that is empowering young girls through amazing, beautiful cartography and story maps and videos and they're also educating all of us with their dashboard that shows the true landscape of HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities across this country. There's the work of San Bernardino County that's now using Survey 123 to provide a true count of the homeless, including the many homeless who are people of color. And all of the inspiring work that you're going to hear about and discuss today. Thank you again and remember that black history is also women's history, it's world history, it's our history. Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us for, uh, to commemorate Black History Month here at Esri. Um, special thanks to Clinton who recognized the role that Brand can play in furthering diversity and inclusion goals. Um, brands are more than just products and services. Strong brands reflect a company's purpose its culture, and its people. <clears throat> As the head of brand, part of my job here at Esri is to analyze how other companies have positioned their brands for growth and to contextualize the relevance across all audiences. Raise your hand if you've seen uh, Google's, uh, Google Search's Black History Month video. Great. If you haven't seen, I very, very much encourage everybody to, um, to go Google search for it. <laughs> 
Uh, raise your hand if you don't know what Google search does. <laughs> All right, great. So, um, so apparently ArcGIS isn't powerful enough to locate people who are living under rocks to be invited to this event. <laughs> Good to know. So here's a brand that didn't have to tell its story about its flagship product, but chose to anyway. Google got a lot of kudos for this video, and it was really, really well received. What makes the video so powerful is that it not only reminds people about the power of Google search, but it celebrates through search data, black excellence, and its tremendous influence on all aspects of society. Today, we have the pleasure to share stories of how GIS has been utilized as a means to track changes within the African American community, as well as how location intelligence drives innovation in an effort to increase equality and inclusivity. We know that there are many stories like that, like these that could be told. For the sake of growing the Esri brand, contextualizing our relevance for all audiences and to spotlight the past, present, and future of the black community, these sto stories must be told. So I encourage all of us to continue to develop and elevate future stories in the manner that illuminates the power of not just the functionality of our technology, but the transformational benefit of all communities and society. Last but not least, the event is brought to you by three of Esri's grassroots employee communities, and I'm gonna hand it off to Clinton to tell you a little bit more about those. Hi. <laughs> I'm Clinton Jones, a solution architect at Esri supporting nonprofits and global organizations. I'm also a grassroots employee community leader. People from all over Esri have organized and engaged in dozens of employee communities, comprising over 1,500 people engaged online and in person, rallied under a shared vision and organized under a shared concept that we call our community. Collectively, our community seeks to help Esri's employees and folks in the, in the larger GIS community learn and grow, find a sense of belonging in GIS, and to collaborate and, and innovate. And towards that end, three of those groups, North Star, Black Girls Map, and We Can, collaborated to bring this event to you. I lead North Star, an employee community working to increase representation, belonging, and inclusion of people of African descent. Not just at Esri, but in the entire field of GIS. North Star works towards our vision through social and career networking for collective and individual growth, healing and community building, raising awareness of career opportunities in GIS among students of African descent, and promoting the use of GIS to advance equity and social justice. We know that innovation and opportunity both increase when we include people of African descent and people from other underrepresented groups in the full work of GIS. Include us in a manner that invites all of us to bring our whole selves to bear as we collectively work to understand and solve problems at Esri and in the broader GIS community. Now I'll let my colleague and homie Whitney Kotluski tell you more about Black Girls Map. Hello, hello. I'm multitasking, I'm clicking, I'm moving. So Black Girls Map, um, I know people have probably heard, we have some really cool shirts that we've been rocking throughout campus uh, for the past couple months now. Um, we are an internal and external community focus group um, at Esri. Uh, our primary objectives is, at first when Rain and I, the other co-founder of Black Girls Map, uh, were talking about this organization, like the evolution of it, was trying to get more representation of black women in GIS. We, I've been at Esri for about five and a half years, Raina has been at Esri for about six, and we didn't really see a lot of women that looked like us. And so as we were asking our mentors like Don Wright, Paulette Brown Hines, um, who's head of B Mapping Black California, we were asking these questions of like, where are we at? <laughs> and they're like, we don't know. Um, so we were tasked with actually just trying to find out where we are. Um, and through that, we, we have a map, which I'll show in a minute, um, that showcases uh, 300 so far black women um, and also young women uh, in GIS. The other point that we've also been trying to tackle is just community mapping. So enabling and empowering uh, marginalized communities to be able to visualize 
the issues that are going on around them using GIS. And so with that, how we're doing that is we're simply just um, creating apps, creating maps, and just trying to do things that are out of the box solutions for just having a conversation, initiation. We recently just spoke with Colton High School students um, around just using data visualization to talk about issues that maybe they didn't even realize were happening around them even within their own households. So um, we're really excited about the future of Black Girls Map, um, and we're looking for it to, to keep mapping. Thank you guys. I'm gonna pass this off to Margo now. Hi everybody, my name is Margot Bordney and I lead We Can, Esri's Women's Enablement and Career Advancement Network. We Can is a grassroots internal network of women and their allies united around a common mission. That mission is to enable women of all backgrounds at Esri to achieve their goals and build strong careers. And we're here today because we know that celebrating and centering the experiences and perspectives of women of African descent and all women of color is essential to fulfilling our mission. And not just during Black History Month, but every month, because black history is women's history. I'll hand it over to Reina. All right, well, hi everybody. My name is Reina Kamau, and I am a partner technical advisor here in professional services. Um, as a member of all these groups and an active participant in all the groups that you guys have all heard, it has been an experience putting this event together. I realized that um, with the support of all these groups, you know, as well as all the other folks that are in the audience who participate in these groups, it has kind of enlightened my understanding um, that not only is black history world history, but this is the time to take, to reflect, to Celebrate, it's a time and moment for rejuvenation as well as commitment to making other people stronger or making us stronger as a people. It's kind of like a chance to discover more about you know, those who came before us and helped shape what our lives are right now. So with that, um, just giving you some more logistics on how the event is gonna go. We are going to have a Slido open. We're gonna have a 30 minute session at the end of this event where we can, or you can pose questions to our panelists and our speakers. If you go to slido.com on your mobile phone and use the event code uh, EsriBHM2020, you can pose your questions. You don't have to pose them right now, but as you listen to these speakers, as you kind of gather information, feel free to pose your questions there and we will get into a session where we will have these questions answered. So having said that, I would like to pass this on to Curtis, who will be facilitating the rest of the session. Thank you. All right, thank you, Raina. Um, happy Friday, everybody. Um, I wanna thank you all for joining us. Uh, definitely those folks uh, that are remote as well. And a special thank you for all of our uh, presenters, um, you know, coming from all over the, the country to really focus on, on this event. Um, I, as Raina said, I will facilitate uh, for today. Um, so just a highlight of how we're gonna go through this event today, we will break it up into two parts. Uh, the far, first part will go through our presenters. Uh, they will be covering uh, both disaster recovery, precipitatory action research into racially segregated cities redlining, and local government focusing on equity. Um, and then we will have a small intermission, just about two or three minutes so that we can refocus, um, allow everybody that has to get back to work or go to lunch or whatever else. We'll give you a couple minutes uh, to move around and do what you need to do. And then we will move into part two, which will be the panel session. 